Hello and welcome to this YouTube presentation on a quick guide to TOGAV ADM, the Open Group Architecture Framework, an architecture development method. My name is Charles Richter and I'm the Principal Consultant for Repose Pty Limited. The original development of TOGAV version 1 in 1995 was based on the Technical Architecture Framework for Information Management, developed by the US Department of Defense. According to the TOGAF website, quote, the TOGAF ADM is the result of continuous contributions from a large number of architecture practitioners. It describes a method for developing an enterprise architecture and forms the core of TOGAF, unquote. TOGAF is delivered in nine phases, namely the preliminary framework and principles, architecture vision, business architecture, information systems architectures, technology architectures, opportunities and solutions, migration planning, implementation governance, and architecture change management. For more details, see www.opengroup.org or use a search engine with the word TOGAF. In my opinion, it is important to understand how TOGAF works by understanding the role each stakeholder plays, the deliverables they produce, and their skills. This table shows the role of the stakeholder, both business and technology, responsible for each of the nine phases. I cover the skills and detailed deliverables for each of the stakeholders in another presentation on YouTube. Please see our presentation website for access to them. The enterprise architect will need to address phases 1 through 3, 6 and 9, the business information technology architect, phase 4, and the information technology architect, phases 5, 7 and 8. To get a full appreciation of how the phases match up with the information architecture, i.e. concept, logical and physical, please go to our website www.repose.com and click on the link called Framework Comparison. This is a graphic representation of the nine phases plus the delivery of the business requirements during each phase, the one in the middle. Due to the limitations set by YouTube, the graphic is almost illegible. To view it in more detail, search for the word TOGAF and find the link to the Wikipedia reference. So what about the requirement deliverables? Well basically you're left to your own devices or as a reference found on www.togaf.org forward slash chap02.html states, quote, the TOGAF ADM therefore does not prescribe any specific set of enterprise architecture deliverables, although it does describe a set by way of example. Rather, TOGAF is designed to be used with whatever set of deliverables the TOGAF user feels is most appropriate, unquote. Not bad for a complicated set of phases, but then again, the framework is provided free on an as-is basis. However, deliverables are extremely important, as they mark the end of a milestone in a project plan. So if you do not know what deliverable you require, you could always outsource the work to one of the many organizations that provide TOGAF certified practitioners. According to a source on the discussion group on the LinkedIn site, the number of TOGAF certified practitioners reached 10,000 as of the 5th of August 2009. However, here are a few suggested deliverables. Phase 1, Preliminary Framework and Principles, should produce the organization chart. Phase 2, Architecture Vision, should produce the future objectives and strategies. Phase 3, the Business Architecture, should produce the current objectives, strategies and a gap analysis. Phase 4, the Information Systems Architectures, should produce the database and application designs. Phase 5, the Technology Architectures, should produce the hardware plan. Phase 6, the Opportunities and Solutions, should produce a SWOT analysis and asset procurement plan. Phase 7, Migration Planning, should produce migration plans. Phase 8, Implementation Governance, should produce the implementation plan. And finally, but not least, the Architecture Change Management should produce change requests. These are only suggested ones. To summarize TOGAF, firstly, the original development of TOGAF version 1 in 1995 was based on the Technical Architecture Framework for Information Management developed by the US Department of Defense. Secondly, it is an as-is framework supported by software and is the result of continuous contributions from a large number of architecture practitioners. It describes a method for developing an enterprise architecture and forms the core of TOGAF. Thirdly, TOGAF is delivered over nine phases covering the following architectures, Business, 5, Information Systems, 1, and Technical, 3. Fourthly, TOGAF has no prescribed deliverables. And fifthly, as at 5th of August 2009, there are 10,000 plus certified EAs in TOGAF 8.1.1 and 250 plus EAs or Enterprise Architects in 
TOGAF 9.0. I'm led to believe that TOGAF 9 is a lot more prescriptive and suited for large enterprise architect initiatives than TOGAF 8.1.1. I'm also led to believe that the accreditation can cost upwards of $5,000. But what about the small to medium enterprises? Can they afford to use or outsource to an accredited consultant? So there you have it, a quick guide to TOGAF that I am sure most literature would not have told you. In closing, I'd like to thank you for viewing this presentation. The PDF of this presentation is available for a small fee should you want to assist us further the aims of Repose.com and especially Repose.org. You can find the aims of Repose.org on www.repose.org. You can reach me by sending an email to charles.richter at Repose.com. The next presentation you may want to look at covers the comparison between TOGAF and the Repose technique or perhaps you can look at our presentation on the introduction to the information architect and their associate subcategories. This is a lot of detail, but then again, TOGAF is a complicated framework. Once again, thank you for your attention.